I want to talk to us this morning about the five things that happen when you have an encounter with God. Five things that happen when you have an encounter with God. Joshua chapter 1. Now before we get to the scripture and these five things that I want to talk about, let me say this. United States of America, we need to have another encounter with God. Yes, amen. Amen. People, listen to me now. Whenever God spoke to his people, he always spoke as the nation. He didn't say to one particular church, or to one particular person, or to one particular village. Sanctify ye a fast, turn from your wicked ways, pray and seek me, and I will hear and I'll heal your village. I'll heal your town. No. God always addressed his people as a nation. Now, there were individual peoples that flourished in the things of God. There were individual areas that flourished in the things of God. But God always spoke to His people as a nation. And if the United States of America does not have an encounter with God, who's going to have an encounter with God? Not Africa. First of all, Africa is not a nation. It's a continent. Africa's not going to have an encounter with God. Australia's not going to have an encounter with God. Europe is not going to have an encounter with God. Russia's not going to have an encounter. China's not going to have an encounter. Japan's not going to have an encounter. The Middle East isn't going to have an encounter. Not even Israel is going to have an encounter with God. They can't. I believe it is 25 or 26. Don't quote me because I don't have the exact number, but somewhere in there, religions, 25, 26 or more religions, occupy Jerusalem. And the majority of that religions, those religions that occupy Jerusalem, are Muslims who worship Muhammad. Israel's not going to have an encounter with God. So you know what, folks? The United States of America who believe in God we still trust, it's up to us to have an encounter with God. And when that happens, five things take place. And I want to talk about those this morning. There's not many of Do I need this microphone for yes. everybody to hear me? Do I need the microphone for that to hear me? Yes. Okay. Joshua chapter 1. Verse 1, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, and here's the first thing that happens when you have an encounter with God. Verse 2, the Lord speaks and he says, Moses, my servant, is dead. The first thing that happens when a person has an encounter with God, death must take place. Death inside an individual, death of the flesh, death someplace must take place before the Spirit and the Word of God can manifest itself. Death has to happen first. And the Lord speaks this Himself. He says, Moses my servant is dead. Now folks, those of you listening to me here this morning and those of you listening by way of internet, I believe all of us here potentially have something in our lives that needs to be dead. We all have something that we need to die to. Amen. It's either an attitude, it's a habit, 
It's an idea. It's a concept. It, it, it's, it's some sort of a, of, a, of a possession. Maybe it's something that, that tortures us from time to time. But all of us have something that we need to be dead to. And that concept is this. I want to encourage you in the future that when something comes to haunt you from the past, Listen, folks, I don't, unless it's in front of me, I do not have time for anything that's not in front of me. Does that make sense? Starting tomorrow, in my own personal life, for the next two months through October, my life, seven days a week, I run at an extremely high RPM. It's kind of like this. Put your car in second gear and then go up to 60 miles an hour. And watch your RPM tap go. And for the next two months, that's my life. And to be frank, I don't have any area, any room in my life for anything in the past that should be dead. The only thing I have room for is that which lies in front of me. So if the devil or somebody wants to bring something up that's way back there, even yesterday, I don't have time for it. I only have time for what's in front of me. Amen. And that's exactly what God is saying to Joshua. Moses, my servant, is dead. We live in a culture, we live in a society where people continually reminisce the past. They continually bring up things of the past. Dysfunctional families bring up things and reminisce bad, hurtful memories of the past. Dysfunctional people bring up and reminisce and reignite negative emotion and hurts of things in the past. The other day, if you saw it on the news, we have groups in our society, in our world, two things. Black Lives Matter was protesting the White House because the White House was built by slave labor. Okay. So what are we supposed to do about the protest that the White House was built with slave labor? Are we supposed to name it the Black House? Are we supposed to rename it the President's Mansion? Are we supposed to name it some other name? What's the point? What's the point? They were even protesting the other day Elvis Presley's place for crying out loud. The king of rock. You can't protest him. I mean, come on. They were out front of the mansion in Memphis, Tennessee, and they were protesting. And so the people from, you know, the TV was going, so what are you here for? And well, and then they, what are you doing here? And, and what are you all protesting? They didn't really have anything to say. They, well, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't ask him. You know, basically all they're looking for is attention, right? I mean, seriously. You know what? Moses is dead. Amen. You need to say to yourself in the coming days, in the future, when something from the past is brought up, you need to speak to it and say, Moses is dead. Move on. I've moved on. You need to move on. Moses is dead. Now check this out. Turn to your left in your Bible to the last book of Deuteronomy. This is incredible to me. In chapter 34 of Deuteronomy and verse 7. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes was not dim nor his natural force abated. What that means was, there was a lot of life left in Moses, and God killed him. God killed him. Moses' life is over. And this now didn't have anything to do with Moses anymore. Moses is dead. Now look at verse 6. Look at this. And he buried him. Who buried him? God buried him. And God buried him in 
a valley in the land of Moab over Beth's Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. They don't even know where Moses was buried. God killed him, and then God buried him, and he didn't let anybody know where he buried him. And there's a reason for that, folks. You know why? Because Moses is dead. Now, here's the reason for that. Because in about a thousand years, the Lord of glory, who walked with Moses and talked with Moses and gave Moses the commandments and gave Moses the law, in about a thousand years, the Lord was going to come to earth himself, introduce himself to his own people and to all of mankind, and Moses had to be taken out of the way. So much so that he did not want his children, Israel, to create some sort of monument for Moses, where that on a regular basis, every year, they would go back to this monument and worship Moses, the father of the law, and the father of their nation. No! Moses is dead, and I killed him, and I buried him so you can't ever find him, because one greater than Moses, who walked with Moses, is going to come in about a thousand years, you're not going to know him because you're going to reject him and you're going to kill him even as I killed Moses. But he's the one you're supposed to be worshiping, not Moses on a regular basis. Moses is dead. Amen. Move on. So, folks, I've been preaching the gospel for 45 years. I'm a therapist for the acute mentally ill and for the drug addict and the weirdo and the pervert in our society. I'm a therapist for those people. And I gotta tell you, in all of those years, I've never come up with the strategy, Moses is dead, to defeat things in the past. Now I'm encouraging you, when something of the past haunts you, you look to it and you speak to it, Moses is dead. And then you move on. Yes. Then you move on. Hallelujah. Number two. So the first thing that happens when you have an encounter with God, you experience death. We all have something we need to die to. The second thing that happens, verse two, back to Joshua, chapter one. Verse 2, first thing, Moses, my servant, is dead. The second thing is this, now therefore arise and go. Arise and go. The second thing that happens when you have an encounter with God, there is an incredible spiritual compulsion that I've got to go. I've got to go. I've got to go. I, this, can't, this can't stay still. When God called me to preach the gospel when I was 15 years old. All of this took place. I didn't know exactly what I was dying to. You can't always put your finger on it at the moment. But I know as soon as I came home from that prayer meeting of us young people, and I, I told you the story before, but I told Dad, I said, Dad, we've got to go for a drive. And for two hours, we just drove around the community of McMinnville. And I just shared with my dad the goal that was in me. Amen. The goal that was in me. The arise that was in me and the goal that was in me. And for two hours I said, Dad, I don't understand it. I don't understand it all because I think, I think my life has this pattern and, 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 and so forth. And I'm not sure how it's all going to fit together. I'm not sure what the Lord has planned. And Lord, did I ever know that. When I'd be 60 years old, I'd be here on the Nest Person Division preaching you people. <laughs> now, I gotta tell you something. If God would have told me specifically when I was 15 years old, Daryl, you're going to go. Okay, Lord. Okay, Lord, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. You're gonna go to Lapway, Idaho. No, Lord, I'm not gonna go there. No, Lord, I'm I said, no way I'm not going there. I'm going to go to Seattle and play for the Hawks. <laughs> the 
There's a goal. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? That's the second thing. 